my YouTube story is interesting. If you look at my first video that I posted, I was genuinely super excited. For the first time ever, I had switched over from an iPhone after 10 years to an Android and I loved it. I was so excited that I decided to open this YouTube channel just to post a video about why I switched. And well, it seemed to resonate with a lot of people. But what you don't know is that in the past 3 years since I posted that video, I've switched between iPhone and Android multiple times. Here's the thing, I want to be on Android. But there's something about iPhone and iOS that keeps drawing me back. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the top 4 reasons why I keep going back to iPhone. Now, this isn't going to be a debate on which phone is better. In fact, if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving you my top reasons on where I think Android is actually better than iPhone. When it comes to choosing a smartphone, I really think it comes down to the things that matter to you. And for me, one of the most important things has been iMessage. Now, before you go on a rampage in the comment section, let me explain, because it's not what you think. In fact, if you're watching this and you live in the US, you'll probably be surprised to learn that in almost every other country, iMessage is actually very unpopular. The majority of people use WhatsApp, Telegram, and quite literally any other application to communicate. And that's mainly because globally, iPhones only make up about 15 to 16 percent of all smartphones. In the US, however, iPhone demand is at an all time high. New data actually shows that for the first time ever, Apple has overtaken Android, making up over 50% of all smartphones. And as a result, iMessage matters here. But for me personally, it's not about the blue bubbles versus green bubbles, and while certain iMessage features are fun and intuitive, I could actually live without most of them. But the one problem that the iPhone has solved for me was media sharing. You see, I send a lot of pictures and videos to my family. If you have kids or a pet, then you understand what I mean. Once they're born, your camera never stops. I've gone from carrying less than 100 pictures in my photo gallery to over 17,000 in less than 3 years. And being able to send and receive full resolution pictures, and more importantly videos, quickly became invaluable to me. If you've ever owned an Android, at some point you've probably received a video that looks like this. It doesn't matter if you have the top of the line Android because unfortunately, this isn't a problem with Android but with your cell phone provider. You see, cell phone providers in the US limit video attachments to about 3 megabytes per message. Which means that even using Apple's high efficiency format, a 1 minute video at 1080p is still around 65 megabytes. And if you have the new fancy iPhone that can record in 4K, that's closer to 195 megabytes. In either scenario, that file will get compressed all the way down to 3 megabytes, making it practically unwatchable. But with iMessage, your files get sent by an internet connection, completely bypassing your carrier. This means your message is received in the same quality you sent it, regardless of how massive the file size is. And for me personally, that is a feature that I hate that I absolutely need. It makes those Apple garden walls just a tad bit higher to climb over. You see, this is one of the many ways that Apple builds features that are actually designed to keep you from leaving iPhone. I'm currently working on a video that dives deep into this, so if you're interested to see other ways Apple makes it nearly impossible for you to leave, make sure to hit that subscribe button below right now. Some of these features are right under your nose and may truly surprise you. Next on the list, optimization. iOS just feels better. It's part of Apple's magic and it's hard to explain, but I think it comes down to two things, app optimization and interface design. It's no secret that developers spend more time and resources developing applications for iOS that ultimately makes them feel better to use on iPhone. Take Twitter for example. When scrolling your timeline, picture previews on the iPhone look great while on Android they have a weird aliasing effect that gives the previews sharp edges. Or Tesla's app which displays more content on the iPhone despite the S22 Ultra having a bigger screen. These minor optimizations make apps on the iPhone feel more responsive, but the real magic happens at an operating system level. I've always wondered why iPhones felt faster when many flagship Android devices have had equally powerful hardware. Some people have even said that 60Hz on the iPhone is better than 120Hz on Android. And from a technical standpoint, that can't be true. A screen that refreshes twice as fast can't technically be slower than a screen that refreshes at half the rate. But as it turns out, Apple has put a lot of focus on one thing, 
designing fluid interfaces. This includes not only what you see, but more importantly, how it interacts to your input. Reducing latency was a key focus with the removal of the home button on the iPhone X, and the new swipe gestures were designed to allow the interface to be really fluid, allowing you to interact with your phone even in the middle of a transition. Motion blur and motion stretch are carefully dialed in to allow animations to feel smoother, even on screens with lower refresh rates. And there's some things that just feel right like having the perfect amount of inertia when you scroll, compared to most Android phones I've used, which are hit and miss and either scroll too much or too little. Navigating in apps also feels more natural, like how layers are spatially consistent and you can swipe back and reveal the previous layer and it's instantly available. Whereas on Android, you pull back and it's more abrupt. This isn't to say that Androids have terrible UI and animations, but it's very apparent that Apple has spent the extra time and effort perfecting this. There's actually a lot more that goes into how Apple has designed iOS to feel as fluid and natural as it does, and it just so happens I spent a lot of time researching this topic. If you'd be interested in a video that explains this in more detail, hit the like button and leave a comment below. I read all of your guys' comments. Another integral part of why I keep coming back to iPhone is their services and integration. Going back to all those pictures and videos that I take, I store all of those using iCloud Photos. Now sure, I could transfer everything over to a similar service, but the problem is, like many Apple users, I'm already in too deep with Apple. I have the 2TB cloud storage plan that I use for all sorts of documents, including, and most importantly, all of my pictures and videos, which sync automatically to my Mac iCloud Keychain makes managing passwords super easy, but it doesn't help that all my passwords are held hostage since there's currently no way to export those passwords to a third-party app. I also use Apple Music because it's included with my cell phone plan and I like the overall UI. And of course, you can't forget the Apple Card, which currently still does not have a dedicated website to access your finances. The only way you can manage your Apple Card is on an iPhone. All of these services could be replaced if I took the time and effort, but it definitely adds some weight when I consider switching over completely to Android. And the final reason I genuinely enjoy using an iPhone is their overall build quality. While many flagship Android devices like the S22 Ultra have very impressive engineering, the iPhone still feels a bit more refined. It's heavy, but has a well-balanced weight, and the cold stainless steel edges feel great in your hand, despite being a fingerprint magnet. When Apple first introduced Ceramic Shield, I thought it was just a marketing term, but I've noticed a drastic improvement. Gone are those tiny micro-scratches that would become present after just a few months of use without a screen protector, and the latest iPhones have some of the most accurate, reliable, and brightest displays on the market. But it doesn't end there. It's not a secret that iPhones have one of the best haptic engines, providing some of the best vibrations in a smartphone. And one of the most underrated features of iPhones are actually their speakers. Apple has been able to jam-pack some amazing sound into these tiny devices. Even when compared to the top-of-the-line S22 Ultra, the iPhone speakers get noticeably louder with clearer audio and much better bass. Here, take a listen. Small incremental upgrades over the years have really led Apple to create world-class hardware, combined with software that makes the iPhone simple yet a great experience when you pick it up to use it. From consuming content to communicating with friends, or even capturing important moments, the iPhone has been the perfect tool for my needs. But that doesn't mean it's for everyone. The never-ending battle of iPhone versus Android continues, and I'm here to tell you that I truly believe that for some people, an iPhone might be the worst experience. If you favor control and customization, or want bleeding edge technology for example, an iPhone will seem, well, boring. Because it is. So here are some of the reasons why I actually love Android over iPhone. If you want it, there's an Android that has it. Compared to the iPhone's approach of one size fits all, if you go Android, there's a bit of everything. Expandable storage? You got it. You want a smartphone with a world class built in stylus? Not a problem. You want a smartphone that literally folds? They got them. Not to mention flagship Android devices usually get bleeding edge technology first. Wireless charging, OLED panels, and screens with high refresh rates, for example, were on Androids years before coming to the iPhone. And well, let's not even talk about USB-C. 
In a world full of boring slab phones, companies like Samsung are pushing the envelope and making smartphones that are exciting, even if it means that sometimes they're not perfect. And this variety of hardware options also comes with more software options. Customization on Android used to mean tacky themes and ugly widgets, but that's not what I'm referring to. When I set up an Android, tweaking the little things makes a big difference with customization options that just make sense. Like, for example, being able to change the lock screen shortcuts to something that I actually find useful. I also prefer the Android status bar with notification icons and the ability to remove certain UI elements to give it a very clean look. I like that the notification center and toggles are all together, and unlike control center on the iPhone, I'm able to customize which toggles I want in the order that I want them. It just makes sense that every person has different needs, and being able to customize your smartphone to your specific wants is one of the biggest reasons that I believe Android is great. Gone are the days where customization was synonymous with tacky. Android has truly matured and become a world-class operating system that can adapt to almost anyone's needs. In conclusion, all I'm trying to say is that for me, the iPhone ticks all the boxes that are important. And while I wish I could use an S22 Ultra or even the Z Fold as my main device, I would be compromising too much that it would take away from the fun experience that these devices are designed to offer. But I'm excited for the future of all smartphones, and every year, Android is closing the cap with its flagship devices. And who knows, and maybe one day, the switch will be permanent. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and thank you for watching.